What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and on this episode of Coding with the Fours, we're gonna go over what an IDE is and why it's so useful to use one as a Salesforce developer. All right guys, so today we are gonna go over what an IDE is and why it is so incredibly useful to you as a developer whether you're in Salesforce development or some other stack, um, it doesn't really matter. If you're doing development, you should use an IDE because it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Um, but let's just figure out what IDE even stands for, right? IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And what that basically means is it's an environment in which you can combine a ton of extremely useful development tools to make it so that you can develop faster and more efficiently every day, right? Um, so in, in this, this uh, IDE that I have up in front of me is IntelliJ. And within IntelliJ, I'm using a plugin that allows me to do Salesforce development called the Illuminated Cloud 2 plugin. And there's another um, tutorial that I show you how to set all this up for Illuminated Cloud, or sorry, for IntelliJ. Um, there's another tutorial where I go over how to set up Visual Studio Code as well. But just for demonstration purposes for why an IDE is useful and powerful and all that kind of stuff, I'm just going to use um, IntelliJ here. So IntelliJ, uh, or really any IDE, is going to allow me to do a whole bunch of things to make my life and the lives of the developers on my team potentially uh, a lot easier. So in this one interface, right, I have my code editor. So I've got the ability to write Apex code or um, I have the ability to write, you know, a Lightning Web component or an Aura component or Visual Force, all that kind of stuff. and. I also have things within here like a SQL query. Um, you know, I, I can do SQL queries in my org directly from here. Um, I can also analyze debug logs directly in this IDE. Um, I can do an, a run anonymous Apex right here. And so far, you might be thinking, Okay, that, that's cool, Matt, but why wouldn't you just use the developer console? It has all those kind of things, too. And you're right, but there's a lot that this has that it doesn't. Um, so, for instance, if I went over to this Opportunity Calculator service and I wanted to just figure out, you know, where, you know, where is this class? In the developer console for Salesforce, I would have to open the file, find the file, open this file, all that kind of stuff. In IntelliJ, all I have to do is hit Control B, and I'm right here in the class. That took me a tenth of a second. Also, if I wanted to know everywhere that this Opportunity Calculator service is, I can hit Control C, then do Control Shift F which will allow me to search for this class in all of the code in my uh, Salesforce environment, right? So I can see its usages uh, really quick with hardly any effort at all, which also isn't possible in the developer console. And there's some other things too. So one of the biggest advantages, especially in uh, IntelliJ and Illuminated Cloud 2 is autocomplete. So I'm just starting to type system. It knows that system is available in the Apex programming language. And I can just hit tab to autocomplete that for me. And if I put a period, it's going to tell me all of the things that I can do with this system class, right? If I was using um, the developer console, it's not as inclusive of all the things I could do um, with this system class, right? Uh, it does occasionally list things, but it's pretty inconsistent and doesn't typically include all of the functionality you could 
potentially do. And that's the same thing in JavaScript as well. You know, if I did um, console dot, it's going to tell me all the different things I can do with the console console class in uh, JavaScript, which is pretty cool. So it gives me a lot of insight into the different functionality I have available to me um, without me having to go out and read a bunch of documentation, right? And there's tons of other things that are useful here too, like uh, enabling uh, version control, which will allow me to basically create local backups of my code. And if anything ever goes wrong, I could revert back. Couldn't do that in the developer console for sure. And if I go over here to settings, uh, there's a lot of other things that are super useful as well. If I wanted to set my code style for uh, Apex, there it is. And I could come in here, and it'll let me set all of my defaults for my code styling for Apex, and it's going to automatically format those things for me. So if I, um, you know, didn't want my else statements on a new line, I wanted them in line with the bracket, I can just check this box on and off, and it'll help me, you know, style my code automatically, right? And then you can see there's tons and tons of options that allow me to kind of uh, define what I would personally like to see in my code, uh, how I would like it styled. And you can even export these and give these to other developers on your team if you have one, and then everybody's code can kind of look the same. And you can do the same thing for JavaScript, right? You can go in and, and change your code style so that all your code stays consistent and gets updated the way that you want it to be. Right, look, look and feel the way you want it to be. There's also some other cool things. Uh, I don't know that I have any <laughs> test classes in here. Uh, maybe I do. Uh, that is the Nebula Logger stuff, which is convenient. So thank you, Nebula Logger team. Uh, <laughs> you can run uh, your Apex tests from right in here, and it display coverage. Uh, right next to the classes that it tests, which is also pretty awesome. Now, I know you can do this in um, uh, the developer console as well, but as you can see, this is going to break down exactly what classes uh, it covered right in front of you. It looks a little nicer, and then it also breaks down um, what happened over here as well, right? All the, the line coverage, all that kind of stuff. So, pretty cool. Um, tons and tons of really useful functionality. And this is really just scratching the surface of what is actually capable in this IDE. And, uh, you know, I'm not even getting into the fact that uh, you can open the terminal here and I could use the Salesforce CLI right in line here, which I cannot do at all in the developer console. And um, so there's an enormous amount that you can do by leveraging an IDE like IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code, which I know I'm not going over here, but there is a, another video that goes over all the functionality of Visual Studio Code. And, um, you know, it just makes your life a lot easier as a developer. Um, not to mention, you know, I can just hit Control S, and this will save this uh, code directly to my org, right? It's not like I have to write it here, go back to my Salesforce org and save or something. I can write it here, save it here, and it'll reflect itself right back into my Salesforce org, basically instantly. So, um, yeah, tons, tons of functionality. Uh, I also forgot to mention you can set up your comment headers to look the way that you want them to for everything. So you can even style the comments um, to at least get them started off right for everything, uh, for every class you create. So lots of stuff. Again, barely scratching the surface. I can, um, or I will put more documentation on what is available to you feature-wise for um, the IntelliJ and Illuminated Cloud 2 setup for an IDE as well as the uh, Visual Studio Code setup. And I have 
two tutorials that go over uh, how to set up both of these IDEs in great detail. Uh, it'll only take you about 25 minutes to set them up and it'll make your life way easier as a developer. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> um, so hopefully that was a good introduction to IDEs, what they are, what they're capable of, why they're worth your time. Um, again, there's tons more to them, but the goal here is just to give you an introduction so you understand why they're so useful. Uh, yeah, so um, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, uh, hit the like button, hit the bell if you want more uh, information uh, you know, about the next time I upload a video. And uh, yeah, stick around because this is just one of the videos in a series of over 100 videos on how to basically become a Salesforce developer from, you know, just learning about what Apex is all the way up to more, much more advanced topics. So stick around and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.